Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is Andrew and welcome back to Overwatch. Today I want to talk about whether or not your kill death ratio KDR matters in Overwatch. And a lot of people will probably just dismiss it and be like, oh no, of course it doesn't matter in Overwatch. But in my opinion, the answer is quite a bit more complicated than that. I mean, if you take a look at Blizzard and the steps they have taken, um, some characters don't even have a final blows counter when you hit tab, right? Uh, but other characters, they do. They have that tab. So, I feel like the actual stat of your kill-death ratio itself, at least in Overwatch, doesn't matter that much. However, if you kind of break it down to what role you're playing, that may be more of a difference. For example, if you're playing as a support, you probably won't be killing nearly as much as you would as an attacking character. However, the stat may be more useful to you if you're an offensive hero. So as an example, you know, if you're doing pretty well as Tracer, uh, and you got, got a ton of kills, a lot of eliminations, you know, kill participation, then that's probably a good measure that you're doing your job, you know, killing people more often than they kill you, doing more damage to them than they do to you. I feel like in this case, with an offensive hero or any sort of damage dealing hero, yeah, I mean, maybe the KDR stat, or if you want to call it the EDR stat for elimination death ratio, if you want to look at it that way, you know, maybe KDR, EDR, maybe that kind of stat would be a good marker, a good sign to see for yourself how well you're doing. I mean, of course, Blizzard has taken steps to make sure no one else can see your KDR on paper. I think the most you can see how well your teammates are performing is the on fire type thing where your little avatar on the scoreboard glows on fire. However, there's a flip side to all of this. I see this happen time and time again when people in games get mad at their teammates saying, Oh my god, I have, I don't know, 30 deaths because I'm just doing the objectives. When in reality, what happens is they just kind of run in solo by themselves and not really do anything and just end up dying. You have to kind of look at it like this. Dying in Overwatch definitely has a cost. While it's not necessarily tied directly to a ticket system like you would see in a Call of Duty or Battlefield, or even a game like Dota or League of Legends where deaths from a hero actually give gold and extra experience to the enemy. Uh, in Overwatch, it's more of like an opportunity cost kind of thing. If you're dead, your teammate has to play with one man down and you can't really be doing what you're supposed to be doing with it. That's killing people, supporting people, you know, a dead player is just that, dead weight, you know? You, you can't really do much when you're dead. You're, you're stopped from doing whatever role you're doing. You can't really contribute to the team. So I think the take home message here in this video isn't really necessarily about KDR anymore, but more like minimizing getting yourself in really bad situations and dying. Obviously there are exceptions, right? I mean, if you want to jump in as Mercy and revive your whole team after a wipe and you probably would die from that maneuver, I definitely think it's worth risking it. Uh, or if it's a situation where, I don't know, it's overtime and you have to keep the clock ticking so you kind of just throw yourself on there to try to reset the overtime timer. There are, of course, tons and tons of exceptions and I love how people always like to point out the exceptions. But I think in general, you know, as a player in Overwatch, no matter what role you're playing, you, you want to stay alive. I mean, that sounds so obvious. But I see comments and questions towards me even saying stuff like, oh, I play support, so uh, that means I'm gonna die a lot. Which is true, I mean, that's a valid statement. When you're playing a support, other players can come out and try to kill you. But in my eyes, and this is coming from someone who plays support a lot, I mean, I love, love playing support in Overwatch. The difference between a good support player and a bad support player, one of the differences anyways, is that the good support player knows how to position himself optimally to really keep himself or herself from getting picked off by the enemy. You know, I think a good support player has that awareness or that game sense, whatever you want to call it, whereas the bad support player just sort of runs in there not really aware of where things are and just getting slaughtered over and over again, and they're not really able to contribute to the team. Anyways, those are my thoughts on KDR and sort of segueing into deaths and how that all plays into Overwatch. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree, disagree? Have any questions or counter arguments for me? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to be enlightened. Anyways, guys, that's just about it for today's video. I'm gonna head to bed, but I guess until next time, I'll see you in the next one.